Hey, kitty girls, it is Sunday, June 19th? 19th. It is 19th. Yes. Okay. (laughs) I don't know why. I just blanked on the the date. Boop. (laughs) So it's Sunday, June 19th, 2022. Uh, And welcome to Cubs Out Loud Drag Race All Stars Season 7, Episode Number 3. Where we're going to recap the most recent episodes of All-Star Season 7, which happen to be Episodes 5 and Episode 6. Um, and I've already forgotten what the titles of those episodes were. Draguation Speeches. Okay. And I wrote it down. Total Request Live. So they did call it Request. Yes. In the... In the episode title. title they did right so in the episode title they called it that jada called it that in confessional to camera but every other time they kept calling it the actual they name. just kept saying trl or yeah well they did actually say request a couple of times which is what was very surprising to me because it wasn't quite a parody so that means no. that they paid their parent company for some of that money for the rights yes <laughs> <laughs> and they got and they could do that because it's on Paramount Plus as opposed to VH1. Oh. Nicely done. I hadn't quite thought of it that way. I was just thinking in terms of Viacom, like and how mm-hmm. they pretty much I mean, own, own all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, but yeah, no, sure. no, no, you're 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 spot on. Yes, very good, very good. Anyways, for those of you that don't know who we are, my name is Gary with me is my ever fabulous co-host. Hello, everyone. It's Damon, who's in on the beats and getting all the shit. There we go. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Jada. Uh, Uh So we're going to uh, discuss the most recent two episodes of uh, Cubs Out Loud. Or sorry, of (laughs) RuPaul's Drag Race (laughs) All-Star Season 7, which is all winners um, from Episodes 5 and Episode 6. Uh, before we get into the our first segment, I do want to uh, give this feedback. I So this is unofficial. I don't have permission. I'm not really naming them, so I'm not going to quote anything. But I did get some messages from someone I know. And they were saying that the, this is their first season of Drag Race that they've seen ever. Mm. And they are really enjoying it. But they asked me, should they go back and watch the regular seasons? Huh. And I said... Because then they went on and they said, this is reminding me a lot of the Great British Bake Off. Ah. And here's the parallel about how everybody is so supportive of each other and they get along and they really like the camaraderie and like there just seems to be a fun energy about it. At which point I said to them, uh, probably no. Yeah. I would probably not watch the regular series or any other series, period, mm-hmm. any other season, just because – this is an anomaly. This is yeah. this really is RuPaul's best friend race version because mm-hmm. none of the queens are getting eliminated. Yeah. There's real no there's not really any cutthroat aspects of personality. No one's being, you know, super bitchy. Um we'll get into more of that later I think in this episode. Yeah. But so yeah, yeah, so I was like, um, I don't think so. I think you can continue to watch this particular season and be satisfied to walk away and don't watch anything else. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll, and I'll, I'll caveat it just a little bit, and I'll say this is a very unique season. Correct. Um, and I think that is showing. Um, the judges are – fine. Well, right, let's, let's build a tea, honey. Where's my cup? There we go. And boom. And uh, – <laughs> The judges are being very complimentary and very supportive, surprisingly so. I'm hearing not a whole lot of critique or criticisms, except just like minor things here and there. Mm -hmm. I'm not hearing nearly as much as what I thought I would hear. Um, So that's part of it, Mm -hmm. number one. Number two, all these girls know each other in some way, shape, or form. This isn't like, you know, 14 queens walking into a room that some might know each other, but mostly we're all strangers. Correct. Uh, where, you know, personalities can clash. These are girls, these are girls that have been on tour, who have, you know, done gigs together, have been winners, because in all that, they all have this winner kind of thing going on for them too. And that adds a certain element to the 
like camaraderie and friendships that they have because they have had it. Mm -hmm. It's not anything new. This is not something that is being built. The only one that has the kind of could potentially have an exception is the Vivian because she was from Drag Race UK. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of, but you know, she's a winner. So she's been with them and she, I believe has been to, has toured in the United States. Maybe, I don't know, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, and finally, um, as you mentioned, like no one's getting eliminated. There's no fear or pressure to push the girls to raise to, to it's not, there no, there's no pressure to take risk. You can take risk all you want. You right. can have fun. You can, you can right. you, do something weird and odd and you're not going to go home because of it. And more uh, than likely you're going to be rewarded mm -hmm. for doing something out of the box, strange, yeah. odd, weird, like unconventional mm -hmm. where in a regular season, the judging has these weird patterns, these mm -hmm. echoes of, we've seen this face a million times. Stop relying on that body. This is the same silhouette every week. I don't uh -huh. understand why you keep doing that. We uh -huh. want to see something different. Then right. the queen does something different and they promptly go home. Wait, that's the wrong fan. Hold on. <laughs> facts are facts just saying so yeah. what i find very interesting is in the all winners all-star season you step outside and you seem to constantly be rewarded for being untypical or different mm -hmm. or unexpected exactly da, 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 da. so yes that being yeah so that was just a thing that came to me recently the past a uh, couple weeks since we last recorded i thought it was very nice that they reached out to me and they were like hey like we've been listening blah 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 and i was like oh and i was like well it's good to know yeah. that like you know you're you're enjoying this all winter season but it yeah. is very misleading yeah and, and i'm not trying to deter people from watching the any of the other series and seasons just be prepared that the judging is different, um, how things are handled is different, and the drama is different mm -hmm. for certain. Mm -hmm. um, because some, well, I guess what gets said is reality television sometimes is a reflection of who you truly are. Mm. And we've seen that, that some contestants don't realize how they are in front of other people. Like the last season, Diabetti got heavily critiqued, I think, by social media and public for being a bitch. Mm. And I'm still in the on, on her side and in the camp of she's not a bitch, she just speaks her mind. People don't mm -hmm. like people who speak their minds because they don't know how to handle that. And they think that that's like difficult or gruff yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And every I... time they came for her, she was like, I'm expressing how I feel. A year ago. <laughs> well, there's that right, right, right in the in that moment. But that's what gets me is I've always been in the camp of you don't get to you don't get to tell me how to feel. Right. That's not how this works. Yeah. This is my brain. This is my body. This is how it was like like yeah, so exactly. Yeah, I I I could go on and on about Daya and how like I feel like they just they made an edit for her. Yeah. And that edit made her quote unquote like a villain is character. I don't want to say she was a villain. And now here we are like defending that, you know, maybe she wasn't that awful because reality was she was maybe just more focused on the prize. And where years ago we were totally fine with queens that were a little catty and well not a little lot catty slash um um forthcoming with their with their truths mm -hmm. Bianca Del Rio um, and Truth. now we're kind of like well why is she so you know, why is she so mean like no she wasn't mean she was focused on winning correct and guess where she ended up right and we're starting to see that a little bit in this season which I find very interesting that mm -hmm. some of the queens or being a little bit more forthcoming about how they're here to win. Mm -hmm. um, and for one of them, everything they're doing to play this game is failing them. Which is cracking my ass up to no end. Because I'm like, baby, you are a bad game player. 
you think you can play the game, but you're doing very poorly right now. So I don't know how you expect to win when you keep behaving the way you're behaving. You're also one of eight. There are seven others. They can clearly see what you're doing. I'm just saying. <laughs> she doesn't have a, a second legendary legend star yet, so... We'll see. Yeah, no. So... <laughs> <laughs> That being said, are you ready to jump into our, our first? Let's uh, do it. Okay. By the way, I still don't have the clip yet. Racers, start your engines and may the best drag queen win. <laughs> I should really edit that and, and put it, may the best legend win. <laughs> <laughs> Just put your, put your wish in there. All right. So uh, put the pedal to the metal, our first uh, actual section of, of the of this recap uh, discussion show. We give our overall thoughts, and we're going to discuss any serves, which are the positive things that we liked. Any swerves, which happened to be the, oh dear, like that that was a mess. Um, and then nerves, which could be really good or really bad, depending on like go. how it how it comes across. So, yeah. David, uh, what comments do you have on these particular episodes? So, um. I'm going to give a lot. I, this is going to be a very fun episode. I thought these two episodes were really good, um, in a sense. Um, I'll get to some of it here in a minute. But, like, I, I appreciate the staff and the, the team that is, you know, World of Wonder or whatever, that is coming up with the ideas for making this season a little different mm -hmm. than a regular season. It's not always, you know knocking the ball out of the park, but I will say that it is very, you know, interesting and I'm enjoying it. Um, I'm going to give a serve to the quote unquote nostalgia train. And this goes to the most recent episode of the TRL, you know, okay. moment. Um, I was very appreciative of having that, like those feelings. Cause I remember TRL. Mm -hmm. I remember watching it. Granted, for me, it was out when I was in college. It started, I think it started when I was in college. Or at least in 2000, when, when which was a year they were going back to, I was still in college. Um, right. So, but I think I it must maybe it started when I was in high school. Yeah, we're gonna do a quick Wikipedia search. Yeah, because I remember it, but I never really watched it. And like, and in 2000, I was already out of college. Like, I was done graduated, and and you know, so that's where I'm like, I remember this, but I don't quite remember it. She Okay, so it started in um, September of 1998 and ran until September 14th, 1998, and ran through November 16th, 2008. So almost okay. or over 10 years. Right, right. Which is which makes sense in terms of a pop cultural reference point why they did it. Um, although that was quite comedic to me how mm -hmm. they were like. A lot of the queens, there was all these references to like, you know, were they yeah. born? What, where were they at in school? Raja was like, I was a full grown adult. I mm -hmm. don't remember eight, the first eight years of the odds. <laughs> like, because maybe I was a full grown adult and I was partying and I was, you know, doing the gig. And, you know, so. Yeah. And I was very happy that she, you know, was very forthright about it. Was like, <laughs> eh, I don't really remember much about that. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I mean, like, I rem like for me, um, I remember it. Specifically, uh, because it was a lot, it was you know, the, how you saw music, how you saw the top stuff, you know, again, remember when MTV, <laughs> you remember when MTV played music videos, you it know, was about the music. Yeah. You know, music, television, whatever. Anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's that. Um, I did. A, I, and I think the girls did a really good job with lyrics and, and, and the songs gave a very, you know, um, I will say the songs gave a very, um, boy band feel and like the, you know, like a guy groups, then they did the girl groups, mm -hmm. um, the, but still all the way, you know, still good, you know, still kind of fun. So maybe that was just kind of that, you know, feeling of nostalgia. So there's that part. I give a swerve to an odd challenge and 
this goes to the graduation speeches. Okay. Um, I was a little concerned when when this kind of idea came around because I don't think it was fully discussed what was supposed to happen. It felt odd. It felt off. And everyone kind of took it in this slightly different direction. There were some that were telling like poignant stories about their lives and like actually maybe giving it a bit of humor Mm -hmm. to kind of give that twist to make it interesting. Mm -hmm. Then we had uh, Raja love it, loved it, but it was just this kooky character. And I was there like, is this really what you want to do? I was worried. I was worried, I will say. But I mean, obviously it worked out. She got a star. But I was just like, I just don't understand. I don't understand what they were going for with this. Was it meant to be like kind of like the roast? Or was it meant to be more inspirational because mm. it got, the, the feeling got lost i'll put it like this so you know someone who's graduated before from college and what have you and i'm sure you can say that too or say something similar those speeches are usually a inspiration they're meant to be like to motivate the you know soon to be graduates going into the world to like move you know look forward to what's going to happen to them as they head into adulthood or uh, move beyond the classroom. Mm -hmm. This didn't feel like any of that. (laughs) And maybe because it was supposed to be like drag you and all that stuff, but everything kind of got muddied. And that's why I feel like this was an odd choice. It got very odd and muddied, and I wasn't sure if this was supposed to be a fun, funny challenge or an inspirational challenge or this weird mix between the two. Yeah. Anyway, there's that. I think it's interesting because um, I didn't have, uh, I guess, is uh, like the kind of challenge and understanding what it is that they were doing. I, I, what I will say, though, is I very much see what you're talking about, how foggy and murky it was that they weren't really given like parameters they were but they weren't like they so everybody got to do a really loose interpretation of how they wanted to do it um which to me i i I agree with you it seems a lot more like a roast challenge or um and this is an element that i think wasn't intended but if you have improv slash quick wit skills then this was more in your wheelhouse because you were able to um bring something and be fun with it and ultimately the judges just wanted like they wanted you to hit a couple marks they wanted you to be funny because they always want you to be funny they Mm -hmm. want you they want you to like kind of tell them something they don't know hopefully and they want you to also do x whatever x is and in this case it was i think there was a, a prompt that it was supposed to be some form of inspiration or or not inspiration, but some form of like uh, uplifting, like whatever Mm. guide, you know, guidance kind of thing. Hence we ended up with things all over the place. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And then finally, I'm going to give some nerve Mm -hmm. to the Vivian. Okay. The Viv. Um, As I keep writing, I just write Viv in a lot of my notes (laughs) because Anyway, she has got a lot of nerve. (laughs) I just think she is being brutally honest, which I'm loving. She's being open and frank about some of the things that she likes and doesn't like. I loved her in this last episode with her whole like, well, I don't think it's, you know, right that, you know, our group is being picked by the other people. Mm. And then, and then, and then like when it's like, okay, well, we'll do this. And if you want to do this, she's like, and she didn't even, and she didn't fucking move. I, I don't know if that was a power move. I don't know. And I don't care. I love it because it felt like, like I, I, I wanted to say my piece and just leave it be. And it caused you all to be a little concerned or whatever. And here we are now. And 
where she, I don't, you know, they made it seem again, editing, whatever, made it seem like she was like, whatever, with the, with regards to the whole fucking thing. But I wonder if that was a play, if that was a ploy, just to be like, or it could just be her. Well, I, I, this is the pattern I'm starting to pick up from the Vivian. And they even left it in, in the edit. She has a tendency to say things and then afterwards thinks about what she says. Because mm. remember, at the end of, or in the previous episode, she spouted off about how that actually she wanted to block somebody else, but they were not blockable. Mm-hmm. And then in confessional, she's like, why the fuck did I even say that? Like, mm-hmm. wh- like why, why is my mouth running? And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, how interesting. Like, yes, you're being authentic and you're showing, like, your emotions and you're sharing that with the group. But you're also saying things that are kind of, like, causing you whatever. And I think that's – what I'm saying is I think that's a pattern because – I don't have any problem with Vivian calling out and saying, actually, I do have a problem with the way this is being arranged because basically you four decided you're going to be a group, which by default makes the other four of us the other group. Mm-hmm. And I love how she was like, does anybody else have a problem with being the other group because they they pick, you know, them, themselves or whatever? And I was mm-hmm. like, and I, and I thought it was great that Vivian was like, all right, alphas, like, what, what is that shit? And I, uh-huh. and I loved how, like, it plays. I don't really know if there was much acting. I think there was some genuine concern amongst these contestants. Like, oh, shit. Like, mm-hmm. they didn't realize what they did. But Vivian was also not giving them any ability to fix it. And by that, I mean, she just let it sit. Like, she mm-hmm. took a shit on on the ottoman right right and just like went and sat back down and was like well there's the fresh turd everybody smell it and Uh did nothing did nothing Uh Mm -hmm. and i was like oh like and so i could see what you mean like by that being a power move i was highly amused by the fact that she was just like what do you want and and there is and there is a pile of poo now what like yeah so i was like oh okay okay but at the same time like you know she quickly realized i think well now that i've stirred this up and caused such a stink (laughs) they don't know what to make of her like they don't know Mm -hmm. like if she's gonna really be authentically upset or whatever so then later she's like no i'm good whatever and Mm -hmm. i'm like yeah but they don't know you that well so they really don't know if you are okay yeah or not and I and, and and I don't know if she was. Like it's hard to tell. Well, and now we have this rivalry thing that has come uh-huh. about. Yeah. And we'll probably talk more about that later. But I'm I'm kind of like, oh, this is interesting how this is all playing. Um, Indeed. You know. Indeed. Yeah. So. Yeah. How about you? Um. So I wanted to give a serve. I have a serve for two things. One, Trinity. The train. Right. So this cracks my ass up. First, I want to give props to your mama for the runway look. And I loved how I think it was Carson or Ross said, I think it was Carson said, she looks like a Vita showing up at a funeral. And I was like, yes, like this dramatic, you know, red outfit with a huge ass long train Mm -hmm. and the rose petal thing. And I was like, this is amazing. But what cracked me up was the whole joke that they were call- starting to call her Trinity the train as, as the contestants. And she's like, I promise this is the last one. And, you know, editing does a whoosh, 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 like showing the previous trains that she's had like three or four of them now. And a part of me is like, who cares? Mm-hmm. Obviously, it doesn't matter because in a regular season, your ass would get chewed out for constantly having trains. And there's nothing original about that, no, no matter how good they are. Like, we you know hello we already discussed that at the beginning of this <laughs> show right so but oh it's all stars all winners so who gives a fuck anything goes like everything's right? acceptable apparently apparently everything is acceptable right. like crappy ass little stick things on a on a train that's meant to be your um your your spikes for your spikes on the runway yes i'm talking about shay and it hurts me to do it uh, well, like this that is the, was... but that's the thing about yeah. this season, isn't it? Though it's like, how dare you not call out when shit is shit? Yeah, like 
really like these queens know when 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 it's when it's dog turd why could we not have a discussion about it why are we mm-hmm. avoiding it it's very yeah. weird i'm like it was very. not that good yeah so why right. why why did we just kind of breeze over it like it ain't no big thing okay you're beautiful you're wonderful you look like linda evangelista okay whatever anyway Wrong season, but anyways. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then I also want to give a surf to Ross. Now, here's the thing, and it's in the TRL. I nearly fell off my damn stool in the bar when that part <laughs> comes up, and I said out loud, not very loudly for the whole bar to hear, but I was like, is that Ross? And uh, the people that were near me that were watching with me, they were like, no. And I was like, and, and then they like cut back to him, and I was like, "That's Ross." <laughs> I'm like, "That's Ross as Carson Daly." I was like, "This made up like version of of Carson Daly." I was like, "That's insane," and I'm very curious to know who did his makeup because uh-huh. it was so good and transformative, and I didn't I didn't bother to pay attention, but I'm pretty sure he had a piece on for hair i mean he had a little soul patch obviously but like that that yeah. wasn't his regular normal hair like yeah. it, it was just so transformative it was it was wild 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 to me um and he did a really good job as that weird mc role uh, you know mm-hmm, host mm-hmm. thing that they put together it was yeah it was it was very almost spot on on like Carson. if you know carson daly if you remember that show like this odd um like very quick, these very quick interviews yeah. that would happen on the on TRL, and they would just be like, "Yeah, that's nice." And the the group would like this. Yeah, it it, it was it was fun, and I I guess agree. Like it was so. I was like, "That's that's Ross. Who? What? What? The, ah!" <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> that was so that was wild. That was wild to watch. Um. Moving on to swerves. Mm-hmm. Uh oh. Veil? Question mark. Like veils they, on the they, runway. Veiled it. Veiled it. Yeah. That was uh, episode five. Correct. Runway. Uh huh. When I first heard the, what the, what it was going to be, I was like, "Oh, this could be fun." And then it was okay, but I'm just going to have to call it out. Jada Essence Hall. No, ma'am. Aww. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Not a veil. I was listening to other podcasts. The two hosts were fighting over this very issue. It was hysterical. Like, there was this whole breakdown of the definition of what a veil is, how it attaches. <laughs> like, I mean, all this stuff. And I was just like, damn. Uh, you know, and oh, as much as I don't really want to say this, but I have to, Jinx, the fabric for the front was was like weirdly not uh what do i want to say it was not weirdly like not see-through enough transparent or yes 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 like the transparency if i was in photoshop i would have i would have increased the transparency down on the opaqueness it was just weird that you could barely see her mm-hmm. i was like Ugh. Yeah. So I, so when, oh God, I love them both. And I was sitting here and I was watching it and I actually liked Jada's look. Did I read it down? I did. I, I, I mean, did it like is see. a good look from head to toe, but I was yeah, like, baby, I, the fact that you have fabric and you are not able to move it and you look yeah. like a goddamn like holiday Christmas present under the tree. Like, no, no, ma'am. You look <laughs> like the awkward thing that we don't know how to wrap or put it in a box. So we just kind of like, gather and bunch and make it kind of work yeah and it was it was pretty and i i agree um i think it was on pit stop uh no 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 bussy uh bussy queen that mentioned something along the lines of like if there had been something like different or contrasting in some of this fabric pattern because it's all almost one pattern right 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 right. like fabric right and I think it needed, I agree with her. I think it, um, it needed something else. It needed another element. It needed another color. Yeah. Um, something to just kind of separate it. Some separation was necessary. Yeah. Um, 
Um, and then I'm also going to say this, and I know this is going to be um, controversial for some people, but uh, Monet? Baby, that's not a veil. That's a cage. And just because you put a piece of fabric over it, and then you like reveal the bird inside the cage, does not make it a veil. If you had attached the fabric to the cage and made it like curtains, and you pulled a little string, and then they opened and it stayed, I still don't necessarily call it a veil, but it'd be a much more valiant effort. It looks like you had a whole idea planned, you walked out, and just threw a piece of fabric over your head, and then probably had to take it off, and then walk the runway. And I was like, this is pretty, it's nice, I have other issues with it. You, you you know what it needed? I would have been fine with the cage if it had had, like, fabric connected in the back. Mm. Or, like, your, I yeah. like your curtain idea, but, like, have the curtains kind of open, and then it's kind of still draping in the back, like a, like a wedding veil. Moment. Yeah, I mean, so there's that, and then also... I don't know what she's doing, and I don't know why people are telling her this, so y'all need to stop right now. Stop telling Monet that this peplum, like, extended hip thing works for her silhouette. It does not. It does not. It does not. It does not. She's already thick and juicy. She's already got big thighs and a big booty. She don't does not need to do this weird architectural shit that, like, pops out. This is the second or third outfit this season I've seen, and I'm like... Oh my God! This this is apparently now her thing. Boot. No, no. Let's please stop. I don't Speaking like of which, uh oh. Yes. So, I'm gonna give some swerves to World of Wonder for moving Fashion Photo Review to Wow Presents Plus. Did they? To my knowledge, now I am an avid YouTube watcher. Right, 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 right. And recommendations usually show up. The last episode that I saw was like one of the first, like three, two or three. And I haven't seen anyone since. There was a preview of the next episode on um, um, uh, on YouTube. And then it, the, at the end of it, it said, you know, watch the rest on Wow Presents Plus. And I was like, did she better be lying? And to my knowledge, again, I don't believe it is showing up on. Um, right. Yeah, it's not on WoW. It's not on WoW Presents on YouTube because. Uh, or is it RuPaul's Drag Race? It's not on that. On, cause on, it's on WoW Presents. Right. On WoW Presents, two weeks ago was the last fashion photo review preview. Which right. Which was for Realness of Fortune Eleganza. It was a minute and 46 seconds long, and I did end up watching it. And then, mm -hmm. yeah, no, and then that's it. They stopped it. I think they pulled that because people went fucking ballistic over Violet Chachki being an absolute bitch. Mm -mm. Well. And so there's a part of me that's like, well, maybe it serves you. Mm. You could be opinionated, but you know what they like? They like a, an opinion that is tolerable, not you being nasty. I think Violet is very outspoken, but I think Violet needs to learn how to deliver things that people are willing to tolerate. And I think this is the thing they're not willing to tolerate. I think she's coming across as an absolute bitch, and I kind of don't care. Yeah. Because I'm like, you were yeah. kind of a bitch in your season. You're still kind of a bitch, like, outside of your season. And then this really is making you look like a bitch still, which is bad because we would like to see people grow and be better. So, you know, and and yeah. I, I will say this as a, as a counterpoint, like I understand that people, you know, thought Raven, you know, was difficult on there. But Raven would actually discuss it and like explain her stance. She was very principled about her opinion on things. And I don't think Violet has ever really done that. She's just like, no. I don't care for it. Right, 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 right. You're and it's right. like, that's not enough. Sorry. You have to explain what, what you're not caring for about it. Because then at least people can understand where you stand, not just you don't care for it. But anyways. 
Mm-hmm. Um, moving on. Uh, for me, I have two things I want to give nerve to. Um, oh. So the first one is beads. And this is for Evie Oddly's veil look. Mm-hmm. Um, again, might be questionable for veil. Yeah. But I've seen it three times now, and every single time she turns the corner on the runway, I either get goosebumps or it takes my breath away. It is astounding. So gorgeous. Right. And weighs a fucking ton. Like, I'm sure it does. But I was like, talk about a beautiful representation of indigenous like culture in terms of like a look and just mm-hmm. the and I'm just like ugh. and and it's so uh not been done in a way. Like mm-hmm, to my knowledge mm-hmm. has really not been something like it. And it's like and all I keep thinking is, honey, I hope that outfit's insured and I hope that you wear it when you perform, even though it probably will like cost you extra for luggage for weight, you know, <laughs> just to take right. it someplace or whatever. Um and you know, you'll have to stay away from the crowd because people will probably ruin it because people are stupid. Um, but you know. I'm just saying. True, true. But no, true. it's a. Uh, so I thought that, and then this kind of ties into it. Um, I want to give nerve for original runways. Mm. Um, and this is an example of it. That that beaded look that Evie did, and then what Raja did for yeah the, the veil look, like definitely iconic. Mm-hmm. Um, this is iconic for the for the for the reference for the judges, not. Monet's look. Sorry. Mm. It was really good, but I don't think of it as iconic. I think of what Raja did as iconic. And this bitch, this bitch, this bitch gives no fucks. I love that she schools the judges while she's standing there and she's like, she's like, what's what? She's like, it's French for veil. You could give me extra points for that. I mean, like, she (laughs) is just like giving it to them. It is just like, you know. And I was, and I loved how Rube was like, "Well, we'll see what we can do about that." And I was like, "Oh, like she's really kind of taking over your show, Mama. Like you best be careful." Right. <laughs> but no, I, I just really do appreciate like that. There's been some original kind of like runway things that have come up. You know, like would Trinity's veil look be considered original? Not necessarily. But I'll tell you what, Mama, it is drag. Yeah. Like, and, and this is, that is like, that is the thing that I think has been delivered some of the time. And that's what I'm really starting to get frustrated about is we're on this goddamn amusement park ride where one episode we get some really good shit. And then we have another episode where it's kind of like, eh. Yeah. And I'm like, we only have 12 episodes. We're now halfway through the season. And I get it. Like, you don't give these queens a lot of time to prepare. However, I was really kind of hoping for, wow. Most of the time, not half the time or less. So fair. That is very true. And I, I want to say, like, and again, like we talked about it at early, at the start of this episode. I want criticism. I want the judges to critique. Right. Um. Oh, what was it? There was who was it? Give me a second. I'm trying to just think of these most recent episodes. Well, like, um, like, so as an example, like, here's a criticism I would have appreciated. I don't think Shay's look for the graduation speech was all that appropriate. Was it a beautiful dress? Yes. Did it make sense? Not to me. It didn't. It kind of looked look, look more like you would wear that to Sunday church. It looked like a gown. Like, it was very formal, like a, but it wasn't. Like a, yeah, it looked like a gown. Not like a like a graduation you know gown. It looked like a gown. Right. It was it was very it was very fashion, uh-huh. but it didn't quite make sense mm-hmm. for that. And then on top of it, Trinity made her outfit that she wore for that very like that very yeah. challenge. Yeah. And they were all talking about how she was like, oh, she's gonna sew her speech into her dress or whatever. And I was like, who cares if she does? She is cleaning the floor with the rest of you queens. Uh Uh-huh. She is making a lot of her outfits. Right now. Out of the fabric in the room. Like, she knows what the fuck she's doing. Yeah. I am... I forget what it was. Uh, 
I had I'll have to I thought I would have wrote it down, but I didn't. But um Oh, yeah, okay. So I, again, I've I've said this several times. I love Shay mm-hmm. and I really wanted her to win. Um, but her runways recently have not been all that great. Um, her Dolly one in particular was one that was like it just oh it just it just didn't work the way I wanted it to. I get what she was going for, but um I'm gonna say this with all due respect to her. I know you are a melanin queen and I know you are very much about black and beautiful and all of that stuff. Could you have not found a breastplate that matched your skin tone? Could you have not? Is it just that, was it that hard? I mean, Jada did, but I don't, I, 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 you know, I don't, I don't know. So I'm just kind of like, what, what's, what, what happened? Um, yeah. And again, if you're, go- oh, geez, if you're going to do that and you can't find it and it doesn't work, then honey, take, don't wear it. I know it's Dolly, but for the love of God, find another, find something, do something else, something else. It was it just, yeah. it was so distracting. It was subpar. Like, and that's what yeah. I guess the difficulty we're having with Shay is like when Shay delivers, Shay delivers. And it's, yes, mama, house down boots, like, God. Uh-huh. But mm-hmm. if she doesn't deliver, it's like, ooh. Yeah. Does, does I, that, that's not good. Yeah. Like her first look on this show, well, not first look, her first like runway with the headdress and the ears and that just that gorgeous, just gorgeous outfit. I was gobsmacked. Literally, like, right. yeah. I have not seen that since. I have not seen that level. I've not felt that way about her runway since. And that is the, that is weird for me considering Shay. Well, and I really feel like her Dolly look for this most recent episode was a regular season effort. Yeah. In fact, yeah. I hate to say this, but I will. I think it was a bar night impersonation effort. And I was very disappointed. I did not care for the hair. I didn't Mm-mm. care for the fit of the outfit. Mm-mm. It just it just did not go to well together. I was like, no, ma'am. And what kills me is this is an iconic person that there are literally thousands of looks yeah. to choose from. Yeah. So, and, okay. And I get you want to do something that no one else is doing. And I can I can respect that in a sense. But if you're going to do that, then you have to do that. I think Bob the Drag Queen mentioned it on 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 the pit stop. If you're going to if you're going to do something like you know, don't do B-roll. Mm. Don't do B roll when you're when you're doing these iconic you know runways right. or iconic you know stars. I and I can understand that from a challenge perspective, but I can also respect the taking it out of the park and you know taking it you know out of the box and doing something different. But if you're going to do that, you need to kill it. And I think that's what we're disappointed in with Shay is that she has not been killing it consistently. Mm-hmm. So and, and and this was one of those big ones where there were so many choices that could have been made and that could have worked for you. And I feel like I'm I'm just gonna call it what it is. I feel like this was a throwaway. Mm. I feel like this was like I ain't I don't like Dolly. I don't know her. I don't know my I may know she you know how iconic she is, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to find something that's gonna work for me quote unquote for me. Right. So let me just put something together. Yeah. And this is what she came up with. Cause that oh that wig was terrible. That wig was terrible. That breastplate was bad. The fit of that outfit was bad. It looked like it was three different pieces th- slapped ass together. I don't understand those pants. I Yeah. Anyway, sorry. That's okay. 
You ready to move on? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, kittens, it's time for Snaps and Eye Rolls, a.k.a. the hits and misses. What we talk about is the highs and the lows of the episodes. So, Damon, who are you giving snaps to? Okay. So, I'm going to give two snaps. Two snaps up. Um, and the first one is just Mrs. Pelosi. Mm-hmm. Nancy Pelosi showed up on the graduate graduation episode stunning in this yellow with these high ass heels on mm. clanking this runway like she owned it <laughs> i i loved it i was i was so happy to see her and i appreciated her message and that's where like maybe that's what they were attempting to go for with regards to this the graduation the category or the the challenge was to like make these fun, inspirational speeches because I knew that she was coming. Mm. Maybe that's what they were trying to do, and it just didn't land. Yeah. Or else, again, it got murky. But again, I was in awe. I was so happy to see it, and I love that they talked about her shade clap. Um, I love it. It was, it was great. It was great. So there's that. Mm -hmm. And then my second snaps go to... Monet's um, Dolly. Um, so I love this look. I was in awe of it. It's something I could feel myself in my drag would probably wear because I love this so many colors. I knew exactly what she was going for when she when she turned the corner. Um, I thought it was great. And then, you know, we saw the pit stop. We watched pit stop. And learning the story behind it, which I think Monet even posted today on Twitter about what the story was, which is that it was Patty's mother um, who helped them like put these all of these individual squares of fabric together to quilt this outfit's fabric fully all together. Um, and that it was kind of the last thing she did before she passed away. And I just think that I know that as a little, you know, like tug at the heartstrings, like moment to it, but it was beautiful. And I'm going to fault Bussy on this where she did, because he was like, it's not drag enough. I'm like, um, because it should have been rhinestone. Because even, you know, Dolly's outfit was rhinestone. And I'm like, it looks good. It looks really good. And with the lights hitting it, it looks even better. I don't think rhinestones would have, well, okay. They might've improved it somewhat, but it didn't need it. And I, I'm going to hate to say it, that maybe there wasn't time. Mm. So who knows? But I just, I loved it. I thought it was gorgeous. Uh, it's one of the few things that I've seen Monet in that worked overall. Um, I know there's that whole, she has a very, she has this tendency to like go in, cut into black culture on some things. And to be honest, there, it's not always the, the combinations don't always land. Mm -hmm. This one, I don't think there was a, she wasn't going for that. And it was just a beautiful piece of, 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 um, clothing. So, yeah. Coat of many colors, y'all. What about you? Um, so this is where it's going to get interesting for the two of us. Um, I want to give snaps for, and like, I have to clarify, I have a question mark at the end of this. I said, friendly drama? <laughs> because I feel like, like the, the, you know, that the contestants are being really respectful of each other. So I very much appreciate that. Um, and like the, the, you know, there's this banter, there's this back and forth or whatever. Um, and the reason why I'm giving it snaps is because I don't need it, but the viewing audience needs something to hold on to. Because if you are, have seen the other seasons, 
and the other, you know, and the regular series, you know that there's usually this like rivalry, you know, kind of issue mm-hmm. that comes up in some fashion and they get and, you know, and the audience gets really pissy when that doesn't happen. So um, the fact that they've, you know, put and now it appears, so I'm just going to kind of call it out. I think it's production has really, you know, amped up the the antagonism between the Vivian and Jinx. Um, I'm like, you know, yeah, like, it's fun that they're doing that. I'm also a little concerned about this. So, like, well, I applaud it. I'm a little concerned. So hear me out. Mm-hmm. If this rivalry continues, both of them are going to get screwed. Because... Every time one of them wins and blocks the other, if this is all they do for the next six episodes, guess where you're not going to be? You're not going to be in the top four because you know who's going to get all the stars? The others. Mm -hmm. Not the two of you. But Mm -hmm. I don't know how long it's going to take them to figure that out. So I was like, well, careful, kids, because you're going to screw both yourselves over if you keep tit for tatting back and forth. And blocking each other week after week after week after week. Because guess what you're not doing? Getting any stars. And that means you're also not getting ahead. So, you know, if Jinx gets no more stars, she's going to be stuck at two. Mm -hmm. And if the Vivian doesn't get any more stars, she's going to be stuck at one. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you might win some cash, but it's just not the same thing. So... Like, I appreciate that, you know, there like there's this kind of um, antagonism, you know, kind of between some yeah. of the some of the contestants. I'm really loving that Trinity is just the good time gal. Mm-hmm. Like, she's just, you know, finding stuff funny. Um, and she she and Raja are very much like loving, like how sometimes they're taking the piss out of each other. Like one of the better moments, honestly, was when Vivian in the graduation speech said that Trinity, you know, was on top of her professor. And then Trinity practically fell off her damn stool because she didn't see that like rose style joke coming. You know, and Raja, you know, it's so great that you have a degree. It's so unfortunate that you're going to be dead and you won't be able to use it. Like, I mean, like, you know, I I thought that was really funny stuff, but I appreciated their reaction and how they Uh like loved the silliness of that. And some might see that as a little bit of, like, drama between the girls. And I'm like, no, like, they're just, like, they're kikiing. Like, you know, like, that's why I call it friendly drama. Like, Mm -hmm. and I think what's going on right now with the Vivian and Jinx is friendly. But I still, I still ask, I still say a question mark because I'm not sure if in confessional they're acting up because they're being produced to act up. They're being asked to, like, say things a certain way. Or what's going on. Because the preview for the next episode, Jinx turned around and says, there's nothing worse than a witch scorned. And I'm like, okay. What's what's that about? Anyways. So. <laughs> Your eye rolls. <laughs> so speaking of drama, mm-hmm. uh, my eye rolls, I actually titled for drama, question mark. And it relates to this whole rivalry that they put together between the Vivian and Jinx. Now, it seems pretty obvious to everyone that the Jinx is the it, the Jinx. Woo, Jinx is the forerunner. Mm-hmm. She's she's the first. She was the first queen to get two stars. Um, she's not the only queen now. She literally oh, gave. <laughs> Pre block, <laughs> Tim just said. Um, she's the first queen to have two stars. Um, she gave one of her stars to another queen that had one star to give them two stars. And then through the episode, this episode, the most recent episode, we now have another queen, Evie, that now has two, went from zero to two, which is kind of awesome. But also probably, you know, produced. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Not sorry. Um, So here we are. And then we get to this moment. We get to the, 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 this episode and the Vivian wins, but she's been blocked. So she doesn't get a legendary legend star, but Evie does. And then she wins the lip sync. Yay! 
So she gets to block someone. Guess who she blocks? Jinx. But not, I, I don't think this, and I'm going to put it like this, I don't think this was out of, like, spite, although you could say it was. I don't think it was. I think it's, that was the forced drama part of it. Mm-hmm. This is strategic. This is strategy. Who was the forerunner before this episode? Jinx. Who's probably, who has literally just said, there's only one thing that she's not good at. Jinx. So it seems pretty bloody likely that the person that's going to get blocked the most is probably going to be Jinx. It doesn't matter who won. I feel like Jinx would have been been blocked. Now, if they knew what the next episode was, maybe they probably wouldn't have blocked her. Mm -hmm. But, and that kind of maybe proves to us what we were thinking about earlier, if they have an idea or inkling about what the next challenge is. So I don't think they do. No, they definitely don't, because the preview for the next episode is actually Jinx and Vivian talking in the workroom, because the next challenge is another fashion, like, make your your look Mm -hmm. uh, challenge. And Jinx says to Vivian, are you rethinking your block mm-hmm. now that we know what the challenge is? And the Vivian's like, yes. Mm-hmm. And I was like, so I have a sneaking suspicion it's either Raja or Trinity is the most likely candidate for that's putting something really good together. It is mm-hmm. annoying the shit out of the rest of the queens, which yeah. is why I was like, don't be sleeping on her. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Yeah. And it's just this thing. I'm I'm just very I'm very much like tired. I don't want to say tired. This feels very forced. Yeah. And that's where my problem is with it is that I don't. I want to be enjoying this moment. And so far, granted, we're in we're just at the midway point. Mm-hmm. Um. And they even mentioned that in the episode, which is odd. Because typically they don't know how many episodes there's going to be. I think so. the reason why they they actually openly discuss it is because they needed to know in terms of the badges, like the pins, how mm-hmm. many potential there are to be given out. Mm. So I, I think that's only fair to the contestants for them to know, okay, we're halfway through the season. Now, if they're smart, they'll think about it and they'll be like, okay, so it's an all-star, so we're probably not going to have a reunion. If there's 12 episodes, it means there's 11 episodes in which you can earn pins, and then there's the finale and the yeah. winner. So they only have five more to win. Which means 10 pins. Possibly. At the most. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Unless they do another thing where it's give, give, you know, buy one, get one. Which, honestly, <laughs> I really liked that as an element when they introduced it. And they were like, oh, you're going to win two two pins. Now, what cracks my ass up is how Monet or somebody was like, what? Like, like they're going to get two? You know, and I was like, no, they're not going to get two. They're going to get one. And then, yes, they're going to give one away. And it went exactly how I predicted. I predicted that mm-hmm. Raja was going to give hers to Evie. Mm-hmm. And then the other one, I wasn't sure who Jinx was going to give it to, but I was like, Jinx isn't going to give it to her competition. Jinx is going to give it to a queen that she thinks is deserving. And because Raja already gave it to Evie, she's not mm-hmm. going to give another one to Evie. Although that would have been the shit. Mm-hmm. Because then Evie would have come out at the end of the episode, theoretically, with three and been the front runner. Like, went from zero to three in an episode. Because I did say when the episode was over... The people in the bar I was with, I was like, well, Evie just went from zero to two. How interesting. So. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, I, I see your point. Yeah. Okay. Um, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. I got to get to the, I have to get to this and I have to make sure. I, okay. I have all the tags. That's good. And go. <laughs> I don't think you know what I'm gonna say though. I don't. I don't. <laughs> like but you I'm, don't. I'm you you curious. can see on the on the doc the topic like how I phrased it, but I didn't give away what what I'm saying no. is about. Yeah. Um, so I'll lead in. Or... I'll lead in with this. That was a choice. Okay. My eye rolls. Never do that again. 
and I know they are not listening. World of Wonder, you are not paying attention to our little podcast here, so this is not going to get over to you in Hollywood, California. But I'm telling you right now, never, ever, ever do this again. I did not care for the fact that you did it. I was annoyed that you did it. I thought the way it was produced and what the queens put forward was bad, and I don't ever want to see it again. Never, ever, ever do a gay icon runway lookalike challenge. Ever. Hated it with a heat of a thousand suns. That's why you were so quiet when I was talking about Monet. <laughs> <laughs> the dress was beautiful on Monet, hated the hair. The hair made her face look fat. I was so fucking annoyed. I was like, how dare anybody let you go out on that runway looking like that? It covered up your face and it made you look fat. Hated it. Uh, Vivian was the most lookalike of the bunch, but I was so irritated because I was like, no, the hair does not make you look identical to Dolly Parton. The hair would have been higher in the back. Has nobody ever fucking paid attention to what Dolly Parton looks like? Has nobody paid attention for the past like five to eight years she's been wearing gloves and she's been covering up her hands so you only see her fingers? Done. Done. D-O-N-E. Don't ever do it again. Don't do it to share. We've already had Night of a Thousand Madonnas, and it's been a travesty. Have you learned nothing? Stop it. Stop it right now. No more. Can they do Night of a Thousand Michelle Massages? <laughs> sure. And, and, and what's worse is you did Dolly Parton, and she was not on the show. You did Vanna White, and she's on the show. The fuck is that shit? Well, I mean... The, I mean, come on, Gary. No, like, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. She is living and available today. She is hot, 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 hot. She's got cake mixes and fucking frosting. She's got an ice cream that came out the past year. Her manager, if it's still the same gay manager she's had from the past couple of years, who is a very handsome looking bear, by the way. Like, that man is making her all the coin in the world before she is gone from this world. Because she is getting older. These are facts. And it drove me crazy that we did a dolly. Like, and, and I'm like, but the pro my problem is, is like, everyone was trying to look like Dolly. And that's where it really started to fall apart. I was like, she has huge breasts, a tiny waist, and hips. Jada Essence Hall comes out of that yellow dress and they're like, oh my God, this dress is so amazing. And I could see her wearing it. No, it's not the right proportions. And I'm glad that Jada thought she had big, brown, jiggly titties. Not big enough. Waist not small enough. Hips not big enough. I was like, problem, problem, problem. And then Raja comes out with that thing on her head. And I was like, <laughs> I love Delta work. But so help me, Delta, you made that mess of a hair that she had on. I'm just going to be so irritated. More than I already am. I'm just like, no, no, no. Don't do Celine Dion. Don't do Madonna. Don't do Cher. Just step away from all of the gay icons and making these queens emulate them it was super shitty. So, Gary, <laughs> tell me how you really feel. <laughs> I almost fell out of my chair. <laughs> I just. I get it. Ugh. I get it. it. It was. And the thing for me was. And I think why I'm so passionate about this is because Dolly Parton is a drag queen. Yes. There is no way to say that she is not. It's like Cher. She is a drag queen. They are the Liberacis of our time. They are high, high, like fashiony, sparkly, glittery camp, like entertainers. You cannot be equivalent to them like it's just it's almost near impossible it's like why are we trying it's like why are we why are you making them icarus this shit to fly so close to the sun like it's just problematic yeah and it's like and if you're not gonna have dolly on the actual episode like if i was any of those queens i would like i'm hoping some of them at a roscoe's party or it comes out later to, for where one of them says or all of them say they were disappointed to turn the corner and not see dolly after what had already happened with vanna white like seriously yeah oh yeah 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 and two episodes in a row 
not two episodes in a row. This is, well, I think this is the second time we have had a guest judge. And I'm like, who the fuck is this? Who the fuck is this? Who don't the know fuck? them. Never heard of them. I don't see how they're relevant. Relevant. Like, this is a regular season guest judge. Not at all stars. I'm so perplexed. I'm like, how many people turned your asses down at World of Wonder to end up with this Swedish pop artist I've never heard of? It's not even Bjork. Like, somebody who I don't even know much shit about, but at least I've heard of. Like, come on. Anyways. I'm done. <laughs> Oop. Shit. Damn it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying, I was trying to type in the woman's name and find out who the fuck she is. <sighs> I thought you were writing in the notes, Gary Rant. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just trying to find out who Tuve, Lo, Tuve Lu is. Right, so on Twitter, some other gays do know who she is, and they were having a fucking conniption about the fact that they did not lip sync to her song. And I want to say it's called Disco Pussy. I, I probably have that wrong, but I was like, what? And I was like, surely they're... I thought they meant Dolly Parton. And I was like, I don't think she ever did a song called that. Like, I mean, I, was, <laughs> I know she's broken some barriers, but I'm pretty sure she hasn't done that. So I looked it up on, on Google, you know, for a YouTube video. Come to find out, oh, it's the Swedish artist. And I started watching it, and I really couldn't get into it. The whole beginning of it, there's a puppet. It's an interview. It's kind of weird. And then it turns into the music video and the puppets in the car and she's driving. And then the puppet turns into a man. Anyways, I was just like, are you talking about disco tits? Yes. Disco tits. Okay. Is. Anyways. That, that's cute. Uh, right. So that, maybe I, why they, maybe because of that song and Dolly Parton because of, t uh, no. Right. I, but I'm the whole point is the point of these <laughs> individuals on Twitter were like, why did you not, if she's the guest judge, why did you not use one of her songs? Oh, probably because she's not very well known. That's why. So instead, we did a Dolly Parton song. So, yeah. There's that. What's that? Oh. That's the, that's the like, because it, it was a Dolly song, but it wasn't like, I don't know, I Will Always Love You, or Hard Candy Christmas, or a song that's really, really popular. It was just why'd you come in here looking like that? Which, I mean, it was, yes, it's a popular. I was just gonna say it was a it was a pop song, like very very high on the charts, forty some years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite part, though, about the lip sync is the Vivian singing it, looking a lot like Dolly, and referencing Evie because it was just too easy. Mm -hmm. Like it was so obvious to me that the Evie was that Evie was not going to win and that the Vivian was going to win. And the person I'm with at the bar says, it's going to go to Evie. And I said, no, it's not. It's going to go to the Vivian. And then sure enough, they give it to the Vivian. And I was like, how did you not see this coming? They already said how much she looks like Dolly Parton. They appreciate like her artistry about how she's performing it. And if you've ever seen Dolly Parton perform, you know that that the Vivian is hitting the mark. She's got the gesture. She's getting it down. She's making fun of Evie. And on top of it, we have to have the produced drama of her winning, not getting the star, but getting the plunger so she can block who? Jinx. It was so obvious to me. Mm -mm -mm. As I said earlier, I think I made reference when you've watched this series for many years, you start picking up on things and catching on to stuff. So, yeah. You know. Many, many years. Yes. And that, well, and that's just it. Like, we haven't been doing this since the very inception, but I've been watching since the very first season with the Correct. Vaseline filter baby. Same. <laughs> Same here, Mama. Same and, here. And I haven't seen. Uh, wait, I have to think about this. I haven't seen really any of the international series except for the first season of Thailand, which I only saw part of. I didn't see the whole thing to the very end, I don't think. And I ended up inadvertently watching most of the first season of UK because somebody else was watching it and I was at their house. Um, but I haven't really pursued it otherwise, you know. So outside of that, it's pretty. It's always just been the U.S. and what they've been putting, you know, forward for that. And I think um, it has its own niche and it has its own production style. So, mm -hmm. anything well, else before we wrap? 
I don't think we can do anything else, dear. <laughs> So that being said, if you have thoughts or opinions that you would like to share, uh, if you have thoughts about my thoughts, you are welcome to go visit comesoutloud.com, our blog. Uh, you can send us an email at comesoutloud at gmail.com. You can even leave us a voicemail uh, with your thoughts. Uh, you can call 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. You can also um, find us online on social media, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Um, if you want to join our chat... <laughs> By the way, hey, Telegram Entourage for Comes Out Loud uh, Drag Race. Funny story today. So I traveled this weekend for Pride. I'm leaving and I'm coming back into town and I'm not paying attention that my message was meant to go to the Comes Out Loud Drag Race hosts Telegram chat for Damon. And instead it went to the regular chat. And I was like, hey, just leaving town. I should get home in time. Just about the time we're supposed to start recording. The Track Race episode. David turns around and is like copy paste into the right chat and goes, I think you meant it to go here. <laughs> I was so amused. I was like, that's what I get for being in a hurry and not paying close enough attention. So it I, happens to that's the why I said, well, there's a little behind the scenes for <laughs> the <laughs> <Yeah>. entourage. Like <laughs> That the, the Drag Race Entourage knows what's going on. Anyways. But if you want to join that, you can go to tinyurl.com uh, backslash telegram. That's T-E-L-E-G-R-A-M hyphen C-O-L-D-R. Uh, if you want to know about our live shows, when they're going to be for the regular series, um, to watch us on YouTube, you can go to tinyurl.com backslash calendar, C-A-L-E-N-D-A-R hyphen C-O-L, um, usually on Sunday evenings each week. And if you would like to support us, there's several ways to do that. First of all, you can get merch. You can go to Zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. There are several items available for you there. Um, one of them happens to be the Cubs Out Loud Drag Race uh, coffee mug that Damon has that he's showing. For those of you that are watching the video, um, it comes in a couple different variable uh, color combinations. Um, but it has that particular logo. He has a matching T-shirt on that happens to be in the baby blue color. And then uh, we also have the regular Cubs Out Loud items like the uh, handy towel <laughs> that <laughs> David is holding up. Um, I happen to be wearing the um, Consensus is my foreplay T-shirt, which is in the drag pride uh, design uh, color scheme. So uh, there's many uh, items you can get over there. You can also become a supporter of us at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud for a dollar or more a month. Um, you get the full episodes um, as well as some extra ditties. Uh, and depending on the, the level that you pick, you get some, you know, nice things through, through the course of the year. Or if you would like to give us a donation, um, you can just go to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can just give us a little tip or a big tip. Uh, you know, we would be happy to accept that um for the cost of putting on the show uh if you would like to uh follow us online uh rate us on itunes preferably five stars thank you very much with a lovely thank compliment you. or you can subscribe pretty much anywhere you can get a podcast cubs out loud drag race does coldr has its own audio feed um in the rss's for podcasts so if you're just interested in this you can follow us there um and damon if people want to get in touch with you where would they do so if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. On most of your related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabriel73. When it comes to drag race things, I do have a different Twitter profile I created, which is Gabriel73 D R A G. Uh, and with that, uh, we're going to head out of here and we will see you in a couple of weeks from now when uh, we get back together to discuss the next upcoming episodes of All Winners Season 7. Oh. So until then, bye. To be loose.